Peace and the mercy and blessings of God be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm coming now to the end of my speaking tour in the, in the United Kingdom. On October 26th, uh, I had an interesting debate with uh, uh, my good friend Richard, Richard Lucas from Edinburgh, but we did the b debate in Birmingham. Uh, Richard Lucas proved himself to be a scholar and a gentleman. And the following day, we had uh, another uh, closed door uh, debate uh, with only a few invitees in which we discussed uh, the Quran as a mathematical miracle. Now, uh, Richard uh, has uh, posted something on his Facebook page reflecting on uh, the uh, two dialogues that we had and our conversations, and most of what he has uh, uh, said there reflects the uh, truth of what happened between us and uh, the pleasant conversation we had, especially over lunch uh, uh, on the second day. But some of what he said uh, reflects on the contents of the debate, uh, uh, the two debates, and I want to say something about that. Often when we have these debates, I find that people go away uh, putting out posts, uh, giving their version uh, of, of the debate, which uh, to me is, is really on call for. We should be inviting people to watch the, de the video of the debate because the video actually shows us each uh, speaking for equal time. If, if somebody posts something later on, to me it's like they're just buying more uh, media attention for themselves and presenting their one-sided view. It's naturally going to be one-sided. A lot of people ask me if, after every debate, uh, who won the debate? And I say, you know, my answer to that is not going to be unbiased. Obviously, I'm going to think I did very, very well. And naturally, if you ask the other person, he's going to say he's done very well as well. And sometimes people are going to say they've done well even if they're not thinking it. So uh, let, let's be honest and sincere for the sake of God and refrain from saying that uh, we, we did well, lest we claim more than is actually the, the truth. As for uh, what Richard is saying about the debate, I think he, his uh, views are really uh, skewered in, in this regard. As for the first debate regarding who exactly is God, uh, I think uh, Richard was in great uh, difficulty to try and explain who exactly is God because it's either the Father or the Son or the Holy Ghost or the Trinity all together. And when I pressed Richard, he could not uh, put closure to the number of divine persons in, in the Godhead because he spoke about the Father splitting to form the Son. And I asked, what is the limit of the splitting? And Richard doesn't really know how many um, beings God could split up into. And uh, whereas he said that his punchline was to say that uh, Muslims are talking in general about God, but he is more specific as in saying Barack Obama is the president of the United States of America. Well, uh, my retort to that was that it's as if Muslims are saying, yeah, Barack Obama is the president of the United States of America, whereas our Christian friends are saying, yeah, the president of America is Barack Obama and Michelle and Maliha and Sasha. So they have a whole family there, uh, whereas to us, it's just the one person. Uh, so as for the second uh, dialogue regarding mathematical miracles, there too, I don't think uh, Richard did very well. I presented many areas of uh, patterns uh, that are very complex in the Quran. And in a separate video, uh, I have uh, just recorded, not for this purpose, but for the Dawah uh, scene, I have uh, recorded a video showing that uh, the Quran fulfills all of these uh, various mathematical patterns that are so complex that the best explanation for this is that it is the Word of God. In the debate itself, I said, look, there are words which are used in the Quran a number of times which appears to be deliberate. For example, the word day is used exactly 365 times in, in the singular. Is that just a coincidence? Secondly, I've shown that there is a complex arrangement between the uh, verse numbers and the chapter numbers in the Quran. And I have tested 73 books, the 73 books of the Christian Bible for that pattern. Not one of them has that uh, pattern. So it's a very unique and remote uh, possibility that the book has this pattern. The best explanation for this is that it was guided by God and, and this is not the work of a human being. The third uh, area is that I've shown that things uh, turn out to be multiples of 19. And since only one number in every 19 is a multiple of 19, the chance of getting this is one out of 19. And to get it again and again, this is very complex and very remote. This shows the work of God. Uh, fourth, I've shown that uh, things uh, turn out to be on, on patterns of seven, multiples of seven. And uh, m many examples can be given of that, but I want to keep this video short. Uh, fifth, I've said that there are other um, uh, 
such patterns in the Quran which do not conform to the previous categories and by themselves these would have been treated as miscellaneous uh, observations about the Quran but uh, within this present discussion now uh, seeing the other categories this uh, uh, picks up relevance and it shows that altogether the Quran is the Word of God. During one of the rebuttal times because there was more uh, time available to me I saw that I could include a, a sixth category which for its complexity I didn't uh, introduce it earlier uh, and, and this is that uh, there are certain letters of the Quran, not certain letters, but all of the letters of the Quran are used as uh, designations uh, of numbers in, in the Semitic languages. This is why some Muslims uh, use 786 as the equivalent for Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, because the letters do have that uh, equivalent uh, in terms of numbers. Now when we go with this idea, we see that the very complex arrangements emerge uh, in the Quran uh, showing uh, that uh, the, these numbers play out in very significant ways. A very simple example is that uh, the word for white, abiyad in Arabic, uh, is uh, uh, the numerical equivalent of 813. And it so happens that white, with, with all of its variants, are, are mentioned in the Quran some 12 times. And when all of the verse numbers are totaled, it comes up also to 813. So is that a mere coincidence or did somebody plan this? And when we realized that initially the verse numbers were not written in, but only came to be written in in hindsight following the definite stops that the Qaris, uh, the reciters of the Quran were trained to make. So they knew where the stops were and the verses ended, but they didn't think in terms of the verse number. This thought about verse numbers only came later. And to see that these verse numbers relate to the words, the way, th the number of times they're used and where they are used, uh, this obviously is, is not the work of a human being. This is a revelation from the Almighty God. So what was Richard's uh, response to all of this? Uh, he merely uh, presented uh, the, uh, a number of words that he found to be matching in, in Antony and Cleopatra and uh, in, in some other writings. But that does not uh, do the trick because what I've shown in my examples is that there are definitely contrasting words like uh, man and woman. Um, um, shaitan and malaika yeah, and uh, this world and the life hereafter dunya and akhirah uh, for example dunya and akhirah occurring 115 times each first of all we're dealing with a large number each and secondly they're definitely contrasting terms when uh, R Richard was challenged about this he had to look among his examples to see if any of them were, were contrasting terms and then I was able to say the fact that you have to look at it now means that you didn't really uh, get results of that uh, nature. He wasn't even looking for such uh, results. What he did was he found terms which he could by some explanation say are, are terms related to each other. Uh, but where is a book that has the word 365 times exactly? Where is a book that deals with the chapter and verse, that has the chapter and verse numbers emerging in the mathematical pattern the way it has evolved in the case uh, of, the, of the Quran? Uh, what about the Bible? We've seen that the 73 books of the Bible, none of them has this mathematical arrangement between the chapter and verse numbers that I explained in, in that debate. Uh, what about patterns of 19 and of 7? And what about the numerical uh, values? value of uh, letters forming very complex equations uh, in, in the Quran. Uh, so none of this Richard has actually shown and I think he failed to uh, dislodge my uh, firm stance uh, that the Quran is a mathematical marvel and when we see these marvels in the Quran we are on good grounds to conclude that the Quran really is a revelation uh, from the Almighty God. Of course this doesn't mean the end of debating. Probably Richard and I will have some future engagements. He's already proposed some topics that we should be debating in the future. And I do hope that Richard and I will meet again as friends and that in the end, despite our disagreements, we will continue to be friends and uh, we will continue to, deba to debate, not for the sake of defeating each other and claiming victory, uh, but for the sake of greater understandings uh, so that we can understand each other and so that Muslims and Christians can reach a better understanding each of their own faiths and also of the faiths uh, of their neighbors. I thank you for watching this uh, video. Uh, please uh, continue to follow my videos online. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.